perceive myself to be a victim of genetic engineering. Genetic engineering of food concerns me a lot in this country because I don't think most Americans are even aware of it. In 1989, I took tryptophan for a five-month period and later came to find out that the tryptophan was essentially poison and it was on the same level as a nerve gas poisoning or a pesticide poisoning. So there was a period of acute illness where a lot of people died instantly after they took the tryptophan. The people who didn't die usually got serious cases of and varying degrees of illness um, called EMS. Um, the EMS works by causing a high eosinophilia rate, which is a type of white blood cell that responds to uh, things that people are allergic to ordinarily. In this case, the poison was so toxic that people had astronomical levels of eosinophilia. And what that did was create these white blood cells which would attack the poison and then the eosinophils would explode themselves and create more toxins, so you actually got a double dose of toxin. So when the investigation started, um, right in the very beginning, there was some evidence that came out at the time and documentation and other places that they had changed their manufacturing process and they had done two things. The first thing was to genetically engineer the product and the second thing was they changed their filtration process and that was a cosmetic thing where they wanted the tryptophan to look whiter or cosmetically more appealing. So the information came out initially but then shortly thereafter when they realized that they were in trouble and a lot of people in the United States were dying from it or getting seriously ill, um, the information disappeared and it was believed at the time that it was burned in a fire, or that's what the story has always been. Genetic engineering of food concerns me a lot in this country because I don't think most Americans are even aware of it, and even when they're made aware of it, they don't seem that bothered by it. You know, it's, it, and again, it goes back to the old, you know, it can't happen to me, or so what, or, you know, it's, it's already probably uh, being genetically engineered, and I'm not dead yet, so why, why care, or whatever. It's hard to get people here riled up about such things. Um, my daughter went to school in England for a short while, and we visited there a number of times, and uh, just as an example, people in England, I mean, there was a article in the newspaper almost daily while you know any time we went there no matter what year it was on genetic engineering and they're much more attuned to it and much more um, uh, active about it uh, so I mean I really don't know what it would take even the accident with the tryptophan didn't really seem to affect anybody because it was such a small group of people, you know, proportionate to the United States population, that people don't see it as a threat. So I don't know what else you can do other than, you know, die right in front of them. Scientists insert a gene from one species into another species DNA. They need to artificially turn on that inserted gene. They use a promoter, something that turns the gene on 24-7 around the clock in high volume. They assume that the promoter that was used in almost all genetically modified foods would only turn on the gene to which it was attached. However, research has shown that this, can, this promoter can turn on other genes at random and keep them on permanently 24-7 around the clock.
which means that these genes could be creating allergies or toxins or carcinogens or anti-nutrients or something good. We don't know. It was found that after a single transgenic meal, this promoter was found intact inside rat tissue three days later. So it had transferred from food to internal organs. If this happens inside of us, it's, possi it's possible that this promoter could turn on genes at random in our own DNA and pump out allergens or toxins or carcinogens or anti-nutrients. It's also possible that it could promote excessive cell growth, which may lead to cancer. Another possibility is that this promoter can switch on dormant viruses which have been embedded in our DNA for thousands of years. It's also true that this promoter has a recombinant hotspot. It means that it could potentially create genetic instability and recombination. So if we eat genetically engineered foods, it's theoretically possible that the promoter transfers to our DNA and causes DNA mutation. And these are just some of the scores of potential problems that can occur from genetic modification. The most common result of genetic modification is surprise side effects. We don't fully understand the side lo que comemos transgénico y no lo sabemos, no lo podemos seguir. Que no existen muertos por transgénicos, pues resulta que sí existen y están bien documentados. Se murieron más de 100 personas cuando usaron el L-triptofano para compartir el insomnio. Una compañía japonesa produjo el L-triptofano dobleteando los genes a las bacterias que producen el L-triptofano. Inmediatamente empezaron a aparecer los muertos, muy semejantes a las muertes. La clínica Mayo se encargó de recibir todos los datos. En la sangre tenemos entre 3 a 6 a 10 eosinófilos en la cuenta de los glóbulos blancos. Estos enfermos, al haber ingerido el electrofano hecho por transgénicos, se les subió a 30.000, dando unos dolores horribles. Murieron 100 personas, están bien documentadas en el Journal American Medical Association, está perfectamente documentado y hubo 5.000 afectados. No llegó a los tribunales ni a los periódicos porque las compañías, viendo el problema que se tenía encima de, de acabarle su tanguito, su negocito, pagaron entre todos. El otro problema es el herbicida, metieron un antiherbicida para hacer que el campesino se aviente todo el herbicida que quiera. El herbicida de Monsanto es glifosato. ¿Cómo actúa el glifosato en el cuerpo? El glifosato bloquea la formación de acetilcolina, esperanza. Es la que forma la acetilcolina. Para que haya conexión entre las dendritas de las células nerviosas, tiene que haber acetilcolina. Una vez que ustedes están en presencia del glifosato, no se forma. Hay una debilidad inmensa en los campesinos. Y eso no lo están tomando en cuenta. Y tiene, ¿cómo es que sabemos que lo quieren usar? Porque de eso viven, no de la venta de la semilla. Viven del de, de herbicida, porque su semilla no va a crecer si no le echan el glifosato. Entonces te necesitan una gran cantidad de glifosato y, y, y te están envenenando poblaciones enteras porque el glifosato cuando llueve, cuando se va al aire, va a otras regiones, todos estamos en presencia del glifosato, con toda el problema neurológico que van a tener las gentes y las futuras generaciones. Ustedes todavía tienen un inmunológico que está ocupado de, de preservarlos. Y van a venir las enfermedades que ellos me llamaron aquí degenerativas, son las autoinmunológicas, que, lo, que no hay forma de pararlas. Una vez que se arranque con nada para...